thank you all for coming today. We really appreciate it. My name is Camille Kalatosti. I'm the Dean for Institutional Assessment and Graduate Studies. Uh, this session on Berkeley's teaching of guitar is part of a continuing series of sessions we're organizing to share information about those on the Berkeley Boston campus and with our faculty and leaders at our partner schools, including Berkeley's campus in Valencia, Spain, schools in the Berkeley International Network, schools with whom we have articulation agreements, and just other schools with whom we work. One of our goals in creating these sessions is to share information about Berkeley curriculum, pedagogy or teaching strategies, and really just uh, sort of our general philosophy with those who are teaching some of the students who will be joining us here at Berkeley College of Music. This event is being live streamed and will also be available for review afterwards as well on the berkeley.edu academic affairs website. I want to give a special welcome to those of you joining us virtually. Um, we wish you could be sharing this meal with us, but for anyone in a warm climate, you will be glad that you are not in Boston right now with snow up to your knees. Um, many people worked very hard on getting all of the technology together and getting it all to work. So I want to give some special thanks to those people, to Mary McClory, Ernie Gillis, Giles Christensen, Chi Ping Ho, Reggie Lofton, Tim Paul Weiner, Steve Nichols, and his whole production team. We're very grateful. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Um, while you're eating, we will uh, begin our session. Um, our goal is to finish all of the work that we're doing here together by 10 minutes before the hour so that those of you who have a class at 2 p.m. can head off to your class. Uh, for, um, we are hoping that we'll have a chance for people in the room to ask a question or two. And for anyone watching us virtually, if you have some questions, please feel free to email graduatestudies at berkeley.edu and we'll try to get your question over to the right person. So as I mentioned, today's session focuses on guitar instruction. Uh, in a moment, I'll be turning over the stage to Larry Bayonne, the chair of the guitar department at Berkeley. Before I do, I want to just take a moment to thank him and introduce him. Larry is a very experienced performer and educator. He has been with Berkeley College of Music for 41 years. So he has lots and lots of stories to tell, I am sure. He won't be able to share those all today, but if you uh, ask him nicely, I'm sure he'll be able to share those with you someday. Uh, Larry has a bachelor's degree in music from Berkeley and a master of music from the New England Conservatory of Music. He's a recipient of the Downbeat Hall of Fame Scholarship. He was the principal guitarist with the US Army Band in Washington, DC. He's performed with numerous jazz concert and recording ensembles. Uh, too many for me to mention right now, uh, but he's just a, a, an amazing performer. He's also the author of a very important book at Berkeley, uh, The Berkeley Practice Method Guitar. Um, this is really considered the first ever method that teaches how to play in a rock band, improve your improvisation, timing technique, and reading ability, and master your role in the groove. It's been a really important uh, text for our curriculum at Berkeley. So I'm very grateful to Larry for leading this session. So please join me in welcoming Larry to the stage. Thank you, Camille. It's nice to be here, I think. So uh, I, I have, um, my job here today is to talk about the guitar curriculum and um, it's a very, um, let me tell you about the guitar department first. The guitar department um, has about um, 61 faculty in it. Uh, that's uh, guitar in the guitar department. We have about three or four adjunct faculty. And we teach mostly private lessons, labs, guitar labs, and uh, guitar ensembles. Um, it's very important to know that today I am talk I'm going to talk mostly about one portion of the private lesson. Um, the portion that everyone here who comes to Berkeley needs to um, 
matriculate through. We have um, your guitar lesson in your first two semesters. Your first semester is an hour. The second semester can be an hour. And the rest are up to what you have for a major. But everyone here takes four semesters of lessons. And when you first come, we ask you and we find out what your, uh, we give you a placement test, uh, placement audition, mostly to find out where you are just right at that time when you're here. And we want to match you with the right private lesson teacher, whether it's um, in style or style interest or proficiency on the instrument. So part of the lesson th uh, that everyone takes, part of the uh, requirements is that you uh, have to do certain amount of what we call uh, our final re um, exam uh, requirements, uh, affectionately known as proficiency requirements. Um, and you take that at the end of every semester that you take a lesson. The other, if you only do that, I, I feel like you're only uh, taking part, um, taking advantage of part of the uh, education here at Berkeley. We're matching you with the teacher that we think that you can uh, progress with individually. Uh, faculty um, are teaching many students many private lessons, and in many ways, each private lesson is a separate class. Every student has different needs. Sure, we all have these final exam requirements, but uh, we want you to learn about style. We want you to learn about um, um, your role in that style, whether it's rhythm, whether it's soloing, whether it's playing um, uh, uh, solo and phrasing, learning repertoire, getting the right sound. That's all between you and your teacher. And we want to keep that individual with your teacher. What I'm going to talk about now is what we expect everyone to um, know these essential things in, on the instrument. Let's call it guitar craft. Um, it's craft on the instrument. It's uh, navigating on the instrument, knowing the instrument well so that you can make choices, whether it is now on the style that you're playing or you can switch to any style and have the, f the um, technique, the knowledge, the harmonic knowledge, um, the, uh, the process of learning a style and making music. Remember, we, uh, our philosophy here at Berkeley is that we want to prepare students to have a career in music. So um, I'll go, one way for me to warm up, my hands are cold, um, not surprisingly, uh, is um, I'll talk about the final exam requirements and they have, uh, I'll go over scales. Every final exam requirement has uh, a section on scales, uh, major scales, chromatic scales, melodic minor scales, harmonic minor sca scales, uh, whole tone scales, et cetera. Every, every uh, requirement has a knowledge of triads, both arpeggios and playing them as a chord. Um, every one has a, a section on four part chords, either um, playing uh, arpeggios or playing the chord specifically. And everyone has, um, has a performance piece that is uh, chosen between you and your teacher that you've been working on. Hopefully it's not the only performance piece you're working on, but it will represent what you're learning in your lesson. And everyone has that uh, dreaded reading. So um, we'll, I'll see if I get into that. But first let's talk about the scales. Um, I'm going to uh, talk about how I teach it. What is wonderful about my department, and well, it's not my department, it's the department I'm in, that everyone is such a wonderful teacher and professional musician, and I trust anyway on how to get to the end. You know, like um, um, 
I have a certain way of teaching and making sure students know their scales and other teachers have another way, but we, our ending is always uh, together. So uh, basically what I want to talk about is that uh, I used to call this uh, basics. It's not basics, it's fundamentals. That's how I feel right now. It's fundamentals, and if you know your fundamentals on the instrument, you, you can go and progress very well. If you slide through the fundamentals, you kind of have to go back all the time. In fact, I have to go back all the time because there's always something to review and get better. Anyway, with major scales, I really, um, want my students to start knowing some uh, fundamental five basic fingerings. Now these are not just the fingerings that I say that everyone has to use, but these are the ones I use. So um, I think about position playing for right now at the beginning, and I think about my first finger um, in the second fret, it would normally lie so that we have, we're in the second position. And I teach, um, and I've gone through this, and this is how I learned. I went through the book with uh, William Levitt, the former um, chair of the guitar department. He was my teacher. Um, five basic fingerings in the second position in the Modern Method for Guitar book. So I talk about, or let's play the C scale. I'm not using any open strings because I'm getting this fingering because I want to transpose it and move it to other um, keys. But here's that, that's the C. And um, I use the first finger stress to get uh, the lower notes. Uh, many people slide up to the next note. It, um, you can make your choice after you know that you can do it both ways. That's how I feel. So that I did the C major scale. F major scale, I go to and stretch my first finger of the first fret and F and I play. I go to um, my second finger on the sixth string G and I play G major scale. I go to the uh, fourth finger, uh, fourth fifth fret with my fourth finger on the fifth string, which is D, D major. And I do the, uh, my fourth finger on the fifth fret of the sixth string, the A major scale. I stretch with my fourth finger there. So if I can play five major scales in the in the uh, second position, I can go anywhere and play five major scales. So I'll go into the fifth position and play E flat. A flat, I stretch my first finger. B flat, second finger. with my fourth finger. Um, so I'm doing uh, five major scales in that position. So if I know five major scale fingerings, I could also play five major scales in different, uh, one major scale in five different areas of the, gu the guitar using uh, where the root is, either on the fifth or sixth string. So I, now I'll play five major scale, uh, five fingerings of C major on the neck. So, and there are others, but these are, uh, to me, the best, uh, the way I start. C in the second position. C in the fifth. C in the seventh. C in the ninth. Stretching. And seeing the twelfth, it, it's a little hard, you no know, cutaway, so. So 
So that's five major scales in that position. Uh, and five major C major scales on the neck. So that's just the beginning. The, the other thing we need to do is to learn these scales. When we learn a major scale, we should learn the um, playing them in different ways because when we play melodies, we have to play them with different intervals. So it's good to practice, let's say, a B-flat major scale in thirds. <laughs> try fourths. When I'm teaching a lesson, I also try and make um, have the student relate to the scales and or whatever we're learning with some quote unquote, let's say, real music. So uh, when I'm doing um, major scale and I think about a tune that's in thirds, I think about this tune called um, Jitterbug Waltz by Fats Waller. So I have them play it or I, I, I play it, I have them play it. And so here's Jitterbug Waltz and you can see that we're going in thirds but you also were going down in fourths. So I'll play that because I think that whatever we're learning, we always have to continue playing music and use what we're learning in music because um, that's, why we're, that's why I'm playing guitar is not to p play scales, to learn the instrument enough so that I can play some music. So here's uh, Jitterbug Waltz by Fats Waller.
So uh, when we're uh, playing the major scales and we're thinking about learning them better, there's also this term learning the modes of the major scale. Learning the modes of the major scale is important because um, displacing the scale, you get different sounds and it goes to different chords. And many of you probably already know about, we go from uh, uh, Ionian to Dorian to Phrygian to Lydian to Mixolydian to Aeolian to Locrian. So um, what I like to impress is that it's very easy to say, oh yeah, I can play um, a G Phrygian scale, or I know a G Phrygian scale. That's, um, that's a uh, scale starting on the third degree of E flat. Well, you know, there's, um, I have a, um, a belief that a lot of times we say it, you know, uh, we say uh, G Phrygian, so then we have to play it, which is a little harder, right? Uh, and then we have to hear it, which is harder, which goes into more playing. And then after we play it and hear it a long time, we start to use it. You know? So uh, learning the modes of a major scale can be uh, approached two different ways. And I'm, um, I really feel that we need choices on how to approach our instrument or any instrument or music. One is that we can play, um, uh, it's from the parent scale. We can play a C major scale. And then we go to the second degree and we play a D Dorian scale using the notes in uh, C then uh, E. Phrygian, which uses the notes, and, and we go through it that way. That uh, I call is that uh, we're going with either what we call a derivative um, um, way of looking at the scale or looking at the parent scale. The other way is that we start to take and look at it from the parallel scale. In other words, if we're going to play B flat major, then we would play B flat Dorian. Then we would play B flat Phrygian, B flat Lydian, B flat uh, Mixolydian, uh, Ion um, where am I up to? Aeolian, and then Locrian. Uh, we can edit this, can we? <laughs> I, I hope so. Anyway, so, uh, and what we, we find out is that we can hear these also from the roots. And they, so if we play B flat, and then we play B flat Dorian, which would mean that we flat the third and the seventh, so that would be a D flat, an A flat. Um, then we um, play B flat Phrygian, flat the second. And I'll go into it. Later. Then we play B flat Lydian. Uh oh. I haven't taken a final exam in a while. And I play a B flat Mixolydian. So, uh, I, and I categorize these scales by uh, how bright they are and how dark they are. To me, the brightest scale is the Lydian scale. It has a sharp four from the major scale, so it's D. And the next uh, brightest is the Ionian scale, which is our regular major scale. The next one is the Mixolydian scale, which just has a flat seven. Uh, the next one is Dorian, which has a flat three and a flat seven. D. 
The next one is Aeolian, which has a flat three, a flat six, and a flat seven. The next one is Phrygian, which has a flat two, a flat three, a flat um, a six, and a flat seven. And Locrian has a flat two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, and flat seven. So uh, these um, scales uh, are, uh, can be, I usually like to play a chord before it or a two chord so I can hear. So something like uh, B flat Dorian, I'll play that and I can hear the scale. Uh, B flat Phrygian, I would play. And also I can start hearing that. So um, that's one of the uh, ways of really starting to learn the major scale. And I go through this process with, in level two, we do the um, melodic minor scale, level three, the harmonic minor, ma harmonic minor scale, and then level four, yes, there is a harmonic major scale. And we go through that and all. So uh, a lot of our, um, our final exam requirements have been organized by um, one of our great guitar teachers, and um, Mick Goodrick. He came and and uh, we had to we looked at the, what was needed, and and he wanted to add the harmonic major scale, which is um, a great scale to use in uh, improvisation. I use it a lot in, on dominant seventh chords. If I have time and I run one, I will, uh, I will label it for you and all. Um, in the uh, final exams, we also have triads. Triads, uh, in level one, we just take our root position tri triads, major, minor, diminished, and augmented, and we play it across the fingerboard in the root position. <laughs> Level two, we take these triads and we go up and down uh, th uh, four sets of strings. I'll give an example. Like, uh, let's say I want F minor on the third, fourth, and fifth strings. And I go through different inversions. Or I can do it on the second set of the strings. Or first. Uh, so we start to learn both vertically and horizontally how to get around the neck with our triads. One of the things that we start doing uh, later on in our looking at triads is that we start to open them up. These are closed, called closed voicings. What we try and do in in, in level three is to open up and play open voicings. In other words, if we have a C triad and we want an open voicing, we take the second voice, either you can look at it from the top or bottom, then put it down an octave and we have an open voicing. These are beautiful chords. F triad. So uh, I love the open voicing because it, what, it ha what happens is it, it really um, extends the range of the chord and, and it has both a melody note and a bass note that really um, makes the guitar sound full. Um, when I, th I use um, open triads a lot. One of the tunes I use open triads in 
is a tune by Grant Green, one of my favorite guitarists in the history of guitar. Um, and um, the tune is Sunday Morning. I'll play it for you. It has um, F, maybe I'll say it while I'm playing it, maybe. So here's um, Sunday Morning. <laughs> Thank you. Um, many people say that if uh, I know the chromatic scale, why do I need to know all those other scales? Because uh, it's all in the chromatic scale. Things are harder to play less of. Things like um, triads. Uh, on the instrument, on the guitar, playing a G triad like this, of many doubled notes, it's much easier than playing four. So it's always good to work at whittling down these scales and or these chords and getting the sounds you want. But um, I'll mention one thing about chromatic scale. We play chromatic scale uh, many times when I play it. I go up, I stretch with my first finger going up because I'm sliding into the note, and then coming down, I slide with my fourth finger. Um, and then I switch sometimes because I, I need to get there faster or I find that the, there's a... Um, uh, a better way of phrasing by doing moving around a little bit more. Uh, one of the reasons why we play in, we teach um, scales in position and we start playing uh, melodies in position is that we try and not have our hands always look at our, uh, our eyes always look at our hands. We need to, and, and that would help with reading. If I have to look up and down all the time, I will lose my place, both with my notes and also with the written notes. But playing something in position, I know where my fingers are going all the time. I can concentrate on the rhythms and the specific notes that are written in the music. Um, I'm, I'm going to play a piece that has a, a, a number of different things in it. One is that it's a chord solo. and. Uh, 
we do have performance pieces that are uh, mandatory in our final exams. And we can write out chord, um, chord melodies, we can play transcriptions, we can play uh, exercises that show that show that we are working on our technique. It's always between you and the teacher. This piece I've given to a few students because we have arpeggios of triads, of minor triads, and at the end we have this disgusting uh, chromatic scale. Um, and there are two pieces I'm going to play. One is called, is a Django Reinhardt tune called Where Are You My Love? I don't know what it is in, in French, but that's the, and the second one is called, it's a Johnny Smith tune or solo piece called Wally's Waltz. Um, I think I'm the only one who's ever played these two together um, and maybe you'll find out why. So uh, here's, uh, where are you, my love, and Wally's Waltz? Uh, both in A minor, which is the most common thing. <laughs> Thanks. There was that nasty chromatic scale there. All right. So, so I have, um, I guess, a few more minutes. I think now is the time. Um, let me just say that the, uh, our curri curriculum really is to have you play better. We want you to improve in whatever 
area of music that you'd like to play. So uh, if there's any questions, um, Camille mentioned to email her office. Um, I will say my email is lbayone, L-B-A-I-O-N-E, at berkeley.edu. So please email me too. So thank you very much. If, are there any questions or anything? I can't see a thing. I can see any questions yeah. here? Okay, um, one, and, and Herman, um, so it's one question, then we'll just repeat the question after so it gets recorded. Okay. Right hand. Well, um, I will. I will. Um, I've been talking a lot about the left hand. What about the right hand? About the picking hand. I, um, I'm, I'm noticing more people. I, I'll talk about picking because that's my thing. I uh, have tried to always keep my, and I have to tell you, my first guitar teacher was mostly an accordion player. So I did develop uh, bad habits. Uh, but I could bellow shake on the guitar, I think, <laughs> all right? So uh, I try and keep my hand oh, um, not lodged onto the instrument so that I'm having about the same type of angle. Uh, I'm going this way. Um, instead of, if I was here, I'd be going like that. Now, some people can do that. I try and keep my hand free, and I play with my wrist. I don't play, some people play with their uh, thumb, their pick like this, but I. Now, when I pick something that I want to come out strong, let's say even a, t a note on top of a chord, I will use what I term as a rest stroke on the next string. So um, instead of strumming, I will have, I will rest my pick on the first string if my melody's on, so that I'm always emphasizing. I'm still not leaning, I'm just letting my pick fall flat. And when I do, and I try and do alternate picking, I try and do uh, picking that when there's a, the next adjacent string, a downstroke on a lot of adjacent strings too. So the way to practice these, um, Picking is to do, first of all, scales um, in seconds. Do picking, uh, find exercises that outline a chord, and so that you can start, well, this. Uh, I did down, 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 up, down, down, up, down, up. Like that. So, uh, this was a short time or I'd play everything slower um, and I tell everyone to play everything slower because that's how you really get it together. A lot of my students will play something all fast, fairly, and making mistakes, but okay. Not, but if they want to get it better, they have to play it very slow. I ask them to play slower and they make the same mistakes. So it's uh, really concentrating on your, um, playing slowly and seeing exactly what you're doing. Thanks, Herman. Anything else? Well, thank you all very much. We're just about out of time. Let's give Larry another round of applause. Thanks. Okay, excellent job. Um, please, if you're here and have some time, please have some more lunch. And for those of you who have joined us virtually, thank you again. And again, feel free to let us uh, answer any questions that you have. Okay, and one last thank you for Larry. <laughs>